this presentation, I present in vivo and in vitro formation of VR pairs composed of SV40 major capsid protein VP1. And also, I present functionalization of VR pairs such as encapsulation of physiologically active substances in VR pairs and also development of surface modification technology of VR pairs. As an application of these technologies, also I present medical application of functionalized VLPs as DDS carriers for MRI contrast agent and vaccine formulations. I employed Simian virus 40, SV40 captured protein VP1 as a VLP materials because SV40 capsid consists only of major capsid protein VP1, and five VP1 molecules form VP1 pentamers, and 72 VP1 pentamers construct SV40 capsid with 45 nanometer in diameter. Minor capsid protein VP2 or VP3 binds to VP1 pentamer from inside of the capsid. We have chosen SV40 VP1 as a VLP since contamination with SV40 in poliovirus vaccine in 1960s led to show that SV40 is non pathogenic to human. And the structure of virus particle is well known to atomic resolution. And VP1s are self organizing molecules and form hollow like follow virus like particles in virus expression system, and also easy to handle as VLP since it is only composed of VP1. And VP1 has multiple functions to achieve virus infection. So these properties would be useful for our delivery career as a medical application. As for multiple functions of VP1 to achieve SV40 infection, VP1 has functions of self-organizing and forming VLPs and encapsulating virus genome and binding to target cell membrane receptor GM1 and getting in the target cell through capillary-dependent endocytosis and releasing virus genome in the host cell. So these functions should be interviewing for the development of a delivery career. In order to utilize SV40 VP1 for uh, drug delivery careers, we have developed the strategies to prepare recombinant VP1 protein as VLPs and VP1 pentamers. To obtain recombinant VP1 as VLPs, we established the virus expression system of quantity synthesis of SV40 VP1 and VLP formation in vivo. And also, to purify the virus like particle, the insect cell lysate containing VLPs was fractionated by sodium chloride density gradient and followed by dialysis. Electric Electron micrography shows virus-like particle, which is very similar to the SV40 real virus capsule. And in order to prepare the VP1 pentamat, these VLPs were treated by both EGTA, a calcium curating agent, and DTT, a tumor reducing agent. After treatment, in order to purify the VP1 pentamat, that dissociated VP1 pentamers was further fractionated by gel filtration to obtain monomeric VP1 pentamer fraction. By using purified VLPs and monomeric VP1 pentamers, we aimed to develop these three technologies in order to control VLP formation during VP1 pentamer assembly in vitro assembly technology we developed, and also in order to incorporate physiologically active substances in VLPs, we also achieved to develop the encapsulation technology such as to incorporate protein 
enzyme DNA drug and small RNA molecules into the VLPs. And also, in order to confer novel cell tropism to VLPs and to eliminate its immunogenicity, we achieved to modify the surface, surface modification technology where the surface of the capsid is modified by genetically or chemically to insert the targ cell targeting peptide into the VP1 or cell targeting molecule to surface of the VLPs using cross wrinkles. I I described assembly technology first. As I mentioned, purified VLPs are able to dissociate VP1 pentamers in the presence of EGTA and DTT. And then, in order to induce VLP formation in vitro, VP1 pentamers was dialyzed by various buffers to facilitate VLP assembly. As we expected, VP1 pentamer reassembled into the VLPs by dialysis of high salt buffer of tumoral sodium the ammonium sulfate and 2 millimolar calcium chloride pH 7. On the other hand, 150 millimolar sodium chloride, 2 millimolar calcium chloride pH 5, VP1 pentamer facilitated to, uh, to reassemble into such long tube structures. By, uh, however, by uh, dialysis of physiological conditions such as 150 millimolar sodium chloride to millimolar calcium chloride, pH 7, VP1 pentamers alone do not form VLP, remain as such VP1 pentamers. So do, to overcome the difficulty, DNA or VP2 the minor capsid protein was added that localized inside of the SV40 capsid. As we expected, in the presence of double-strand DNA or VP2 facilitated the particle assembly like this, so DNA and VP2 were maybe should be acceleration factors to form the VLP formation. And next, in order to deliver the bioactive agent by VLPs, encapsulation technology is essential. So far, we achieved to incorporate the foreign proteins into the VLPs by fuse to the VP2 proteins at the C terminal of VP2, such as GFP or something. And also, we achieved to incorporate double strand DNA into the VLPs. And also, we achieved such artificial waves. Straight coated magnetite also can be encapsulated by the VP1 pentamers into the VLP. More specifically, I described that to obtain the GFP encapsulated VLPs, VP1 and VP2 GFP was co expressed within the insect cell and purified, uh, I mentioned before. And sodium chloride density gradient centrifugation shows these VLP layers. And VLP layers became green, indicating that the GFP protein is successfully encapsulated in the virus-like particles. It's normally white burn, but the existence of GFP since the existence of GFP, it became green in this case. And to reveal the efficient delivery of GFP into the targeted cell by VLPs, GFP encapsulated VLP was incubated with CV1 cells, which derived from green monkey ketone cells. As shown, the fluorescence microscopy shows that the GFP is detected inside of the targeted cell. So it's indicated that GFP efficiently entered into the cell in VLP-dependent manner, while the VP2 GFP alone is just attached to the surface of the targeted cell, so cannot enter into the cells. 
as I mentioned, also in the presence of DNA, VLP1 pentamers facilitated the VLP assembly in physiological buffer conditions. Electron micrograph shows the virus like particle encapsulating the double strand DNA and formed with 45 nanometer in diameter virus like particle. And then to evaluate whether DNA in the DNA mediated VLP assembly product is delivered within the targeted cells, reporter gene assay was performed. After DNA mediated assembly, this VLP was administered into the CV1 cells and reporter gene assay was performed. As we expected, the GFP expression was clearly shown, so it indicates that DNA can be delivered by virus like particle. However, different from SV40 virus, real virus with 5243 base pair circular double stranded DNA, in this case, up to 2000 base pairs of DNA can be encapsulated within the virus like particle. So to overcome the limitation of encapsulated DNA sizes, we achieved to encapsulate many chromosome coordinated 5,000 base pair DNA within the capsid. And then we compared the efficiency, efficiency of delivery of DNA using ds red as a reporter gene. So after incubation of the assemblies, these assemblies with COS1 cells, all of sense microscopic observation was also performed. So we can clearly see the, this DS thread. So VLP with chromatin inside achieve a high degree of efficiency in gene transfer to Cochran cells. However, transfection efficiency is still approximately 1% of real infectious viruses. So next, we aimed to modify the surface of the VLP to cover the normal cell tropism to the VLPs. For this purpose, the system mutant N138C mutant, mutant BP1 pentama, we prepared and Street-coated street, street magnetite with 27 nanometer di diameter was encapsulated by this pentamers, something like this, and EGF was conjugated to the succimate of the cross linker through primary amine of EGF, and then EGF cross linker was conjugated onto the surface of the VLP through married amid to the cysteine residues of the mutant VP on pentamers, and we achieved to prepare the EGF conjugated VLP having the street coated magnetite with 27 nanometer DNA nanometer. I termed these molecules VLP magwin following presentation, and the electron micrograph showed the clear encapsulated street coated magnetite bead, and the white layer is VP on pentama to confirm the EGF conjugation to VP1. Also, SDS page followed by CBB staining was performed, and we found VP1 band and shifted up EGF conjugate to VP1 band there. So we confirmed the surface of the VP1 is successfully conjugated to the EGF protein. So next we analyzed the targeting property of VLP mag in vivo. This street coated magnetite signal can be identified as negative signal in MRI. So in vivo targeting of VLP mass was analyzed using MRI. As an in vivo targeting model, 
We employed A431 EGF overexpressing tumor and WIDR EGF RUI expressing tumor mouse model. And after injection of VLB mag, and 10 minutes after injection, the significant declined signal can be identified after 10 minutes infection exclusively in the A431 cells, while the WIDR cells is almost the same in this case. So it indicates that VLP mag can be delivered to the targeted cell in vivo. So VLP mag would be used as a um, MRI contrast agent targeting EGFR positive tumor cells. So far, however, we have not been able to remove the restrictions on immunogenicity of VLPs. So we tried to look at this immunogenicity from a different angle and took it as an opportunity of vaccine preparation. To validate, validate this hypothesis, we introduced influenza A virus matrix protein 1 peptide as a model CTR epitope. The FMP5866 is the HRA2 restricted M1 CTR epitopes, GIR, GFB, FDL. This Neymar epitope is genetically inserted into the DE loop or HI loop of SOV40VP1 protein and prepare the, this epitope inserted virus like particle as FMP DEVLP or FMP HIVLP. So we expect that immunization of such chimeric VLP strongly induce M1-specific CTL due to its natural immunogenicity. In this case, we expect that immunization of FMPDE or HIVLP generation of M1-specific CTL eliminates the influenza virus infected cells through binding to both HLA A2 MHC class 1 and FMP5866 epitope expressed in influenza virus infected cells. Indeed, HLA A2 transgenic mice were immunized once by FMPDE or HIVLP in the absence of adjuvant. After immunization, after seven days immunization, intracellular cytokine staining, CD8 positive, and interferon gamma positive lymphocyte in spring was performed. As shown figure, the interferon CD8 positive and the interferon gamma positive lymphocyte was generated in FMP5866 incubation dependent manner indicating that generation of M1 specific CTL was generated. To compare the efficiency of M1 specific CTL generations with the classical adjuvant IFA and epitope of immunization of 50 microgram of FMPDE or HIVLP. This, this case is carrying 1.2 microgram FMP epitope is only 150th that of immunization of FMP peptide in, in complete following the adjuvant. However, the much strong CTL generation was observed. So should be very strong immunological response. And then finally, we analyze whether such FMP specific CTL induced by FMP DE or HRVLP could eliminate influenza A virus from the body. To analyze this, firstly, mice were immunized with either FMP DE or HRVLP and then seven days after immunization, 
the influenza virus strain PR8 was challenged intranasally, and body weight was monitored for two weeks, as shown figure A and B. Without immunization, the significant decline of weight loss was observed while the, by immunization of FMPDE or FMPHLB, such body weight loss was significantly inhibited. And also next, mice were immunized with either FMPDE or HIV LPs. Seven days after immunization, PR8, the influenza virus, PR8 or IH3N2 was challenged intranasally. And after four days after following the challenging virus titer in lung was also analyzed. As shown, we see the after by the immunization, the influenza virus titer was significantly inhibited by this immunization. So overall, immunization with FMPDE or HIV prevents mouse weight loss by influenza virus infection and influenza virus production in the mouse lung. So in this presentation, we we. I described the encapsulation and delivery of biologically active substances, DNA, protein, and so on, and also encapsulation as delivery of magnetized bits. And also, I showed that CTR epitope can be delivered by virus like particles and achieve the CTR induction by this immunization. We also currently analyzing the if usefulness of VLP to the such biomagnetic biosensor probe, something like this. So we expect VLP would be useful as a delivery carrier for various medical applications. Thank you for kind attention. <laughs>